I said, why not, Lord? He says, don't ask questions. Just do as I tell you. You know, you got to listen to the Lord when he tells you to do something because it works out better for you and it works out better for everybody else, you know, when we are in God's will. You know, that story of uh, Jonah, when he run from God, look what happened to him. You know, look all the people around him happened to him because he was out of the will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, it caused havoc on everybody around him, you know, because he was out of the will of God. But when he got back in the will of God and he did what God told him to do, you know, he went over and he preached Jesus to those Nineveh people. And, you know, they all got saved. Even the king repented of all the things, the evil do, de, do, deeds that he had in his, you know, he was doing. Everything, you know, God is a God of love and compassion and he loves us. And he knew what, that uh, he could use Jonah to go and, and save the people, you know, and give them the word of God. Because it's the word of God that we speak that brings out life eternal life you know and we speak words of life and it's on each and every one of us on the inside of us amen hallelujah we got the power and the holy ghost in us don't we hallelujah hallelujah i want you all to turn with me and i'm going to pray before i get started because this is the way i do at my church the lord says do exactly what you do at your church you know and do do exactly and i said okay lord but anyway, I, want, I wanted to finish that story about the church, you know. <laughs> I went ahead and uh, took that church, you know. But prior to that, there was a pastor that had the church, you know. And he kept staring at me and, and looking at me, you know. Every time I'd get up and sing or something and sit down, he was always wanting to say something the Lord had for, me to, for him to say, you know. And I was, I was going, Lord, why is he staring? You know, we always want to know, why is he staring at me? What's going on? Do I look that bad? I mean... Help me out here, Lord. <laughs> you know, your mind is always going. The old devil is always trying, you know, to, to, you know, tear you down and rip you down and put you in a place where you can't be spoken or heard, you know. But God wants to bring us out. He's got, he knows what's in us. He's what we created over the years. He's put it within us, you know. And we can accomplish anything we are set out to do uh, through God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, this guy, you know, and I went on to uh, driving a truck, you know, I, he, um, I took, uh, he told me, Ron, did you know you have a calling in your life? And I said, yes. And he says, uh, okay, you know, and he ministers to me out in the yard because I was walking away to my Jeep and everything. I got to my Jeep and that's when he said, Ron, I go, yeah, because I knew he's wanting to say something. He says, you have a calling in your life. We all have callings in our life, you know. But it's what we want to do with it, you know. How much, we, how much do you want the things of the Lord, you know. How much do you want to see people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and the fire shut up in your bones, you know. You get the fire of God in your bones, it changes your life, amen. Hallelujah. And so he told me, you know, and so I went on to, I uh, came back to Washington up here and I was driving for this guy. I started getting sick and everything and I was saying, Lord, what's going on? He says, you're out of my will. I said, what? And he even gave me dreams, you know, when I was on the truck. And he says, I want you to get off this truck right now because you're running from what I called you to do, you know. But I said, I need to get a job. You know, I have to supply my, I have to, you know, I have to uh, get, you know, I have to make a living. I, I don't want, I want to be an honest man with an honest living, you know. And so I went to work. I went to work up here. And then that's when the Lord started dealing with me. But in the meantime, the pastor had passed away. He fell right down on the platform and died right there, you know. And, uh, and then the Lord started dealing with me. He said, I want you to go back to Oklahoma. And I'm going, you really do, Lord? Is that what you want, you know? I, you know, you go to Oklahoma, there's really nothing there that you really desire because there's big giant bugs bigger than you are, you know. And, and they bite and they hurt, you know. These little, these little guys fly around you and they're... Uh, they bite, you know, and they'll nip you. And there's, there's no peace in Oklahoma when you're sitting out in a chair somewhere and you're trying to visit with your family. These big old bugs, they start biting you and they go, oh, Lord, help me out here, you know. And I always said, a boy, Oregon, man, they don't have bugs like this. <laughs> hey, I hear those big old jar flies, you know, they call them June bugs, you know, and they make all these noises. My sister said, you can't even talk out here for the bugs out here, you know. <laughs> They are so loud and irritating, you know, but or Oregon don't have those, you know, because we were always raised up in Oregon, 
you know, a few, t few years of our life, we were raised in Oklahoma, you know, and uh, we couldn't make it back there, so my dad always come back, you know, to Oregon. We go to Oklahoma, California, Oregon, you know, back and forth all the time. We were always on the road, you know, and it was hard on us kids, to, you know, when we were going to schools and stuff like that. We'd have to adjust to our new friends and always had to make friends somewhere else. And then you make friends with those, you know, and then they're saying, well, I should have made... I, you know, I'm going to make friends with somebody else now, you know. They didn't want to see you go because, you know, it, it's hard on a kid, you know, to take them out of this place and out of this, you know. You need to keep them in one place and, and uh, you know, raise them up, you know, not just bounce around all over the countryside. But praise God, I ain't even started my preaching yet. <laughs> praise the Lord. Anyway, we're going to read from the book of Habakkuk. Almost like talking in tongues, you know. <laughs> huh? I will. I'm just telling you where the where the scripture is. I always do this. <laughs> Habakkuk chapter uh, two, and we're gonna start with verse one. But I want to pray. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to, to move in because there's hearts in here that He knows that are hurting. He knows what you're going through. He knows everything about us, you know. He's a gentleman. He's our teacher. He's our leader. He's our guide. He's our strength. He's everything, you know. So we need to have the leading of the Holy Spirit, you know. We can't take the thing on ourselves and do it ourselves because we need God on our side to, to do everything, you know, to trust in Him. So we're going to pray right now. Has everybody found it? <laughs> Praise the Lord. It says, I will... We're going to pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's just the Holy Spirit getting started here. <laughs> We're getting warmed up here. Father, we thank you so much, and we just give you all the glory. We magnify your wonderful name. We thank you for the mighty move of your spirit, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus right now. For God, you said if we ask anything in your name that you will do it, God. It's no man, no one will get the honor or the glory, but it is you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord God. We are nothing without your power, without your spirit, without your wisdom, without your knowledge. And, Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit to move in each and every one of us, Lord God, that we can be an inspiration to someone, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First verse of chapter 2, I have that back, back it. <laughs> says, I will stand up on my watch. And set up on the tower, and I will watch to see what you shall say unto me, and what I sh and the answer when I call, I am approved. So we always want uh, approvement from God, you know. And how do you do it? You stay in prayer. If we don't have a prayer life, we have nothing, you know. So we've got to stay in prayer and, and be a watchman because there's a thief out there that is ready to steal and kill and take everything that you have. But if we have our joy and keep our joy, you know, the devil, he can't even come around. I mean, you're laughing at the devil and telling him he is nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're like a tower. You know, we were watching all the time. Those that intercede and pray all the time, they know exactly what I'm talking about. We're identifying what, what the Spirit says, you know. The Spirit is saying you need to watch. If we don't watch, the thief cometh immediately to steal, kill, and destroy. You know that? And the devil is real, and the devil don't play games. The devil tries to accomplish something he set out to do. But, you know, we have a Heavenly Father that's great in power, and He gives us the power and the authority through His Son, Jesus Christ. They walk all over the devil and His kingdom. Amen? We have the keys. We don't need to just sit and stay idle because we have something so great on the inside of us. So powerful that when the devil comes around, he cowers down. He walks right back out the building where you came from, you know. He comes in, he and you have the power and the spirit of the Lord in you. And he's big, you know. The Lord is big. It's how big you want God to be in your life, you know. How much do you want to accomplish in your life? How much are you willing to, to, to get on your face and pray and intercede? You know, a lot of times we feel things and it's not even us. And I, the Holy Spirit will always tell you, you know, you're not feeling yourself. You know, my sister, she says, I'm, I'm wanting to leave. I'm wanting to go over here. I'm wanting to, I just want to get out of this state, you know. 
And I go to her, and the Lord, through the night, you know, I'm praying and interceding. He says, that's your sister you're praying for. That's why you want to leave. And I feel, I feel the Holy Spirit, you know. So I go and I tell her, I say, Carol, are, is it, are, are you wanting to leave? She goes, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm tired of the state. I'm tired of everything here, you know. <laughs> she, she, just, she gets uh, a little wild, you know, carried away. I say, you got to be gentle like the Holy Spirit, you know. No matter what, the big bug's biting, you still have got to have the joy of the Lord. Amen. And I'm telling you, they do hurt, you know. That does. They, they hurt really bad. I mean, those mosquitoes, they'll bite you, and for two or three weeks, you got these itch going on all the time, you know. I'm telling you, I, I'm not putting down Oklahoma. They got some really good people there, you know. <laughs> and they're really good. But the Indians there I go to on Saturdays, I, you know, I sing with them and play the band you know sometimes they they do some of the funniest things you know and to, to try to irritate you as if they're going to take your joy you know they'll go into another chord when you're playing you know and they they're, they get a little bit louder than you so they they can drown you out you know and the lord said ron just turn your guitar a little bit louder the next time and that's what i do you know i say okay because i know the games are playing with me you know those okies down there they play games with you because they say you got a big mouth so you need to shut up, you know. You don't even need a mic. You know, I'm saying, well, well, is that what you think about me? My mom tells me I don't need a mic, but you know what? I, I, just, I just do what the Lord wants me to do, you know. And they say, Ron, anytime you want to get up and, and you want to preach, you know, because they say we don't preach here, but we just sang songs of, of, of God, you know, and, and gospel songs. And sometimes I, I, you know, I try to I'm sitting there in my chair in the back, you know, of all of them and one playing, you know, and I said, God, I just want to, I just want to run sometimes, you know, the Holy Spirit don't want to be where there's a lot of sin and, and goofing around because God, he's not a game player, you know, he's not a game player, he is serious because somebody could be in that meeting and they're going through something that you don't even know, but the Holy Ghost in you knows everything, he says, I'll give you, I'll give you the thoughts, you'll know what's going on, you know, you can walk like Jesus. Jesus knew their thoughts he, wherever he went, you know. He knew their thoughts. He knew what they were up to. He knew that the Pharisees and the Sadducees were in the house, and they were coming against him. He knew everything because of Jesus, you know. And he's give us the Holy Ghost, and we, can do, we have the same discernment as Jesus. Did you know that? You have the same discernment as Jesus, and he'll tell you things. If you listen and know the Spirit of God, he'll tell you everything that's in the house. That one over there, you better watch out for him. That one over there, they're going to set a trap for you tomorrow, you know. He knows everything. He knows everything about us. We can't hide nothing when it comes to God, you know. We're exposed, you know. We're exposed before God. And one day, we're, he's going to say, well done. Enter into the joy of the Lord, you know. Hallelujah. We, we need his approval. And then when I accepted that church, you know, I said, God, what do I do? You know, I was nervous. I said, God, I can't, I can't do this now. He said, you, that's right. You can't do it. You just let me do it. <laughs> I, I, you know, when everybody says that, you know, when I hear that, I say, yeah, you can't do nothing. It's going to take God to do it, you know. It's going to take God to turn their lives around. Those that are on alcohol and, and booze, you know, they're boozing at one night stands. All the hate and the bitterness, you know. I don't like hanging around crowds like that, you know. I like to hang out with crowds that know how to shout and sing and praise and worship, you know. Those, and you feel a peace and a joy because in the presence of the Lord there's liberty. You know, when you come into a place, the first time you come walk into a place, you know, you feel uh, anxiety. You feel uh, uh, pain. Uh, and Jesus says you're going to feel that, you know. Any place you go, you, the gifts will, will operate in you. You have gifts in you, folks. We have gifts in us. When we accepted Jesus into our life, those, give, those gifts become into operation in our lives, you know. Because the greater one that dwells in us, he's greater than the one in the world. Amen. We don't have nothing to do with the world. The world. We just want to do the things that God wants us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to, I, I just, man, I tell you, we're just getting started here. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, you know. And we're not to get in a hurry when it comes to God. He says, if you do it the way I do it, it's going to work out. Because 
I'm always trying to find a way to get down and sit down quick, you know, so I can get a, I don't have to talk anymore. But when the Holy Spirit moves on you, you can't shut up. I mean, it just keeps rolling out like the rivers of living water. Out of your most inner being shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. I mean, it's on the inside. It's where the Holy Ghost is. The Holy Ghost and fire. It's the one that's in us. Uh, and we've all been bought with a price. And the, the third trinity, the person in the trinity is living on the inside of us. Amen. Hallelujah. He knows everything. I'm telling you. And he, when you're praying and interceding, and that's what this is about, we're like towers, you know. We're to watch over our families and those that are, don't understand, don't, they don't understand the voice of God. And they come into new things. You know, I, I, when I was a first Christian and, and I had warfare, I didn't even know what it was about. And I said, Lord, what is going on? He said, if it wasn't for those, those, you know, those uh, elderly ladies there praying for you, you would have never made it. You know, because we need prayer in the, in the body of Christ for those that first come to know Jesus Christ, you know. They got to be praying for you. Because, you know, when, when I thought when you go to church, you know, when I first got saved in the church, I had Brother Colson's down there in Hillsboro. I got saved and I thought everybody was holy. There was nothing wrong with nobody, you know. I said, Lord, what is, good? you know, and I, I, I question the Lord a lot, you know. I say, Lord, I don't understand, you know, and uh, uh, once you get saved, you don't want to go back into sins like that, you know. You want to go on and move and, and mature into the things of God, you know. And I, that's what I thought, you know. And then all of a sudden I start to, I'm, I'm seeing this one or that one, you know. And I close my eyes and say, Lord, I didn't see that. You know? It's not going to happen in the church. It's not going to happen. It, it, nothing like that, you know. And the Holy Spirit, the, 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 more, the, the more you grow and mature into the things of God, the more you're going to see. But God, you know, you could share it with your neighbor or everybody else, you know. When somebody is telling you, I, I have something to tell you to share with, it is to be confidential. You're not to share it to the whole world, you know. And it's between you and that person and God. And then they trust your prayers. You know, they're going to they're gonna trust you with the prayer. And you're going to take that to prayer. And, and they'll, they'll start, uh, people will start telling you things that they never told you, you know, nobody else. Because the Holy Spirit is drawing everything out that is not supposed to be there, you know. The body of Christ is going to come alive. We're coming alive in these last days, you know. And that's what the world looks at us. And they say, what is different about those people? That even when they go through something, they still have a joy of the Lord in them. They're still smiling, you know. Hallelujah. When I was on my job uh, uh, years ago, I, had, I, I was uh, praising and worshiping God. And these people said, Ron, why are you always smiling? I said, you really want to know what I smile at? You want to know why I'm still happy? I'm so happy. You don't want to know, realize what, what I, I'll tell you. Do you really want to know? I don't think you will want to know what I'm about to tell you. I said, I have Jesus Christ. He's my Lord and my Savior, and he makes me happy every day. If you, we have a fellowship with Jesus every day, that fellowship and that love and that compassion is going to flow right out of you. And it's going to flow not only through you and out of you, but it's going to flow out to others, amen, that are hungering and thirsting after righteousness, so hungering and thirsting after the things of God, you know. Hallelujah. We're watching. We're towers. We're watching we're watching over our flocks. We're watching over our people, you know, our families, our loved ones. And when the enemy comes into your home, you'll know exactly because it's not that, 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 that tranquility, that peace, you know, that Jesus talks about, the peace, the peace in my home. You know, when I, when I, when I feel somebody coming in my house and they got problems, I say, Lord, oh, God, oh, God. He says, start praying for them, you know. Start praying. Don't say nothing. Just pray. Because you're, you, you know, some people, they come in, they bring things in. And then we used to let um, our, our, my brother-in-laws and stuff that had, they were in drugs, you know. But it was cold outside and we brung them in, you know. And, and we let them live with us and everything. But there was problems there because they brung the problems in, you know. And I knew it. Because the Holy Spirit will reveal those things to you. You know, you're not going to walk blindly. God's going to let you see those things that he's going to reveal everything, you know, to you. He's going to let you know everything that's going on all around you because he loves us so much and he cares so much about us. 
Those gifts are for our protection. The gifts are there for all of us, you know, to enjoy and praise and worship God because he loves us so much and cares so much about us. You know, he does not want us to walk, go down the road and get into a bad accident. He'll say, yeah, linger right here. Don't go any further. Stay right here, you know. And sometimes he'll prolong, and then you get down the road, and you'll see an accident, you know. And, it's a, and the Holy Spirit say, you could have been in there. You were not in there because I'm with you. I know a lot of it was identifying to everything what the Holy Spirit is saying here. Amen. Hallelujah. We're like towers. We're to watch over our families, our loved ones, you know. And always, uh, always be on the guard because, like I said, the thief, Jesus said, the thief cometh not to but to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, why? I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. We can walk in the abundance of life. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Second, second verse of uh, Habakkuk here. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain unto, unto, upon the tables that ye may run that really thick. So we now got the word of God. The Word of God is in us, amen? When you get the Word of God in you, when you're uh, le learning about the Word of God, you know, it becomes a, a, it's a seed at first, you know? And you let that seed begin to mature and grow, and it'll, it'll start producing. Your words produce things. That's why we're to be careful what we say, our words, when, you know, the, uh, it says in Proverbs that we're to, we're to be like a, uh, take our mouth like a horse and a bridle, you know? It'd go to the left or to the right. You have to have control of that mouth, you know, because that mouth can either destroy or tear somebody down, you know. And so we do have to be uh, overseers of uh, people, you know, sometimes, uh, families, and, and be careful how we say things because they're watching, you know. The world watches us. Praise God. And, when we, and you, you know, when I read the Word of God, when I have nothing else to say or do, I get down and I'll read the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit, you can hear the Holy Spirit. He starts telling you and explaining to you things, you know. And, it, and you get so hungry. You're getting so hungry when the Holy Spirit comes on. He makes you hungry for the Word of God, you know. And man, he, you just, oh, I love it, you know. You can't get away from it. And that's the Word of God. It, it, it's, it's really, you know, you're putting the Word of God. You're hiding the Word of God in your heart, you know. And when things come at you, you take the Word of God and you use the Word of God against what is coming against you. That negative come against you, you start speaking the positive things of God and everything's going to turn around for the good for you and me. Amen? So we got to speak the Word of God. And there's a lot of... Uh, we're going to be judged for the idle words, you know. We have angels all around us. And I tell my church, I said, we got big angels all around us. So like uh, those shoulders... And they're about 10 foot tall. And we have, we have privileges and we have benefits with God. We have everything, you know. So we should be more than conquerors through Him, shouldn't we? We have an army that is so great and powerful. And I'm telling you what, you won't fear what, uh, what's around you. Because God, He's got it all. Amen. And He's got our backs. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, He's a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to turn to... Uh, um, Don't tell me that. Yeah, that's the one I need to do. <laughs> I believe it's in Matthew. Um... Matthew 21, 11. I want to go to. Well, praise God. Anyhow. Hallelujah. I need to drink water, too. <laughs> How many you know the living water is better than the natural water? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where were we? Jesus is so good, you know that? Hallelujah. Okay. Matthew 11, and we'll, we'll work our way down here. 
Yeah, 21, uh, 11. I think it is. Let me see. 21 through 11. 9 through 11 is what I was. Yeah. It says, And the multitudes that were before and that followed uh, cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed be that t cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come in Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So, when, you know, when Jesus shows up, uh, people, uh, the atmosphere changes, and the liberty of the Lord comes in, you know, and it just takes over. Takes over everything, you know, and all the thoughts that you had bad thoughts and, and the thoughts that are not of God, they just all vanish away. And then we all come in one mind, one one accord, uh, one uh, spirit. Then the Holy Spirit's going to move and touch people, you know, because I've seen the Shekinah glory come in when I was in prayer and intercession and I've seen a cloud come in. And then I'm telling you, people start crying and the glory of the Lord, you know, and it's nothing to do with a man. It's the glory of the Lord. You know, you don't have to touch them when the, the, the Shekinah glory comes in. Because that's what, the, uh, that's what Jesus was talking about, you know. Wherever he went, the glory of the Lord was there. And God is no respecter of person. Wherever we, we go, you know, the glory of the Lord goes with us. Amen. When we are in prayer and stay in prayer and stay uh, on guard of what uh, is around us, our surroundings, and sometimes we walk into places uh, in the cities and in the uh, uh, all over. You know, I've, I've walked in places where I sit and I hear the Holy Spirit say, there, there, "There's a trap right there. There's a trap. You're going to be in a trap. You're going to." And you pray until the answer comes. You know, you pray until the victory comes. Uh, and a lot of us, uh, we premature pray. You know. For uh, our answer, we get up too soon when God said, just hold on just a little bit longer, you know, because I'm about to show you something that is going to blow your mind, you know. He, God likes to blow our minds because sometimes our minds get in the way of what God is really wanting to do in our lives, you know. And I'm trying to figure things out about people, and I look at people, and this is why I get real quiet. I start looking at people in their eyes and the Holy Spirit, what are you doing? You're going to get off their message if you start looking, you know. So, so I try not to get distracted. I try to close my eyes and, and keep on what the Lord wants to do here, you know. And so it's all about people. People are hungry and, and thirsting after righteousness. God said he's going to fill us. And we're going to be running over, you know, because there's a world out there that is dying. And they're crying out and they want answers, you know. And you as a child of the living God, you got the word in you. David says, I have hid the word in my heart that I may not sin against thee, O Lord. He had the answer, you know, because we put the word way down on the inside of us and say, God, I can do nothing. It is your word. Right now, you know, I, I'm just a man, but I, I use the word of God. But, and that's what changes things is when you start using the word of God. It's not a man's word. It's God's word. Amen. And then the Holy Ghost comes alive and the anointing comes. And that's what sets people free is in the anointing. Amen. And the liberty. We got to have the liberty of God, you know. And there's a lot of times I'll, st I'll start at my church, you know, and I'll say, Lord, how come I feel something in here? <laughs> I said, God, he said, well, you going to let the devil uh, back in a corner and, and shut down, shut off, you know, what I want to, want to be done, you know. And I say, well, no, Lord. He said, then get up. See, God, he wants us to be bold and stand before people with boldness, you know. The Holy Ghost brings boldness. The anointing brings boldness. You don't even care who's in the midst of you. You'll say what God wants you to say, and it will go out, and it, the word does not return void. It goes forth, and it accomplishes what it's set out to do. Amen? It's set out. It's nothing to do with me or you. It is when you speak the word of God that the word of God goes out and hits and, and penetrates, you know? And it says, His word will never return void, but it shall go forth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got all the power, folks. And I want you to know, praise God. He's with us wherever we go. He's with us whatever we do, you know. And praise God. There's sometimes you go through battles and you don't understand. And you're saying, Lord, I don't understand this today. One minute I feel like I have, I'm on the top of the mountain. The next minute I feel like I'm down in the valley. Now, why is this? I, I don't understand. He says, pray. Pray and get the answer, you know. God is always wanting us to seek after the answer. 
What is that? What, what, what's this all about? You know, it's the enemy trying to bring you down. And he's going to work every day. He's going to try everything he can to bring you down. But when you get into that place with God of worship and praise him and thank him so much for what he's doing for you, you know, I'm not looking at what it looks like. I'm looking by faith in the name of Jesus, calling those things or not as though they were until they are. You know, we, go by, we don't go by sight. We go by faith. Faith is what moves the hand of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, and I, and I feel responsible for my, uh, my, my, the body, you know. And, and so you've got to be up there, and you've got to do what God tells you to do, even if it's going to be the, uh, uh, something you have to rebuke somebody or something, you know, go, but Lord, I'm, I don't, uh, you know, when you're being used as a prophet, and you're going to have to go up to somebody, and you're going to have to tell them this, thus saith the Lord. If you don't say it, then, he, you know, they're going to miss their blessing. Because you've got to obey. You've got to know when it is God and when it is not. Amen. You remember Smith Wigglesworth? Man, I tell you, that guy, I read a book one time, you know. He, he was, uh, they, people were all coming against him because of this little baby. Yeah, there was this little baby, you know, and it had died in, and it was in the service. The mom, it died in the mom's hands, you know, arms. And so they, they call it up there, you know, and they start praying for it and everything. And nothing happens. You know what Smith Wigglesworth does? He takes that baby and he kicks it out in the audience. And it lands and it goes right into the mother's arms and it was healed. So God can do the things that we don't understand. All things are possible with God, but with man it ain't, you know. We try to figure things out that God's got something even greater and better for all of us. Amen? Hallelujah. He knows everything about us, like I said, you know. Praise God. It's the Word, the Word, the Word, the Word, the Word. Get the Word in you. It's day and night, you know. We're just keep the, keep the Word going all the time, you know. I know we get busy sometimes. We get busy uh, doing things. And sometimes, you know, I say, Lord God, I, and he said, get in my Word, you know. After 20, 30 years, get in my Word, Rod. You've got to stay in the Word, you know, because that's the rock. That's the true foundation, you know, is the Word of God. And we get that Word of God in us, we become like giants. And the old devil comes around, that little midget guy, he comes around, and he's trying to threaten you, and you say, who do you think you are? I've graduated. I've been promoted by God. I can tell you what to do now, devil. You can't tell me no more. I learned your tactics, and I learned your, your ways. And now I'm going to expose you, devil, wherever, you, wherever I go, you know. We can't back down. When God tells you to do something, don't back down, no matter what it looks like, you know. I've went in places where, I, where God says, I want you to go here in uh, this Walmart and take your guitar with you. And I'm going, huh? You want me to do that? He says, yeah, you're getting a little shy now. You've got know, you to come out of that. And I'm going, if you want boldness. You don't want to stand before the people and be shy and quiet because the message won't get out and they can't hear it, you know? And so I go, okay, what do you want me to sing? And he says, it was close to Christmas, so I sang uh, uh, Blue Christmas, you know? And then I, he said, after that, sing Amazing Grace. You know, get them in, into the gospel. So you're kind of out there fishing, you know, for souls. And you go out there, you sing, you know, one song, and then you turn it into the gospel. And then I'm telling you, folk come alive because it's the Spirit of God. When God tells you to do something, it always works out better. Amen? It works better for everybody. And we're all blessed when we do and obey what God wants us to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. I remember what am I tell you. I, no, man, I tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. I need some water. <laughs> Praise God. I want you to turn to Psalms uh, 142, verse 1. When I get over there, it might take me an hour. To get there. <laughs> See, the Holy Spirit, he, he doesn't stop. I know that for a fact. Because when you're preaching under the anointing, that river's going to flow. You know, it's, you're not going to stop. And he, if, if God's in it, when God's in it, it's, you're gonna, you could preach 14 hours a day if people will put up, you know, listen to it. I'm telling you, that's what God told me one time. I was in prayer and I was, Lord, I don't pray very, I mean, I don't preach very much. First time I ever had a sermon, all my, my sermon was hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> I get on stage, I say, hallelujah, 
And hallelujah. And I hear people laughing, you know. I think, and the devil just it comes up and he says, Ron, they're just making fun of you, you know. No, it's, it's, you're learning, you know, as you go. My first sermon, you know, I was going, Lord, and, and I was going, Lord, I, I don't like that, you know. <laughs> and, but you've got to learn to trust him when you get up on the platform, you know, and trust him and, and, and see what he wants, you know. And you're going to stumble and you're going to fall and you're going to say, Lord, help me now. Because, uh, you, you know, I know when I first got, when I first started going up there, you know, and, and the pastor worked with us. A pastor always works with his, his body, you know, to get him to the place where he wants. Old Brother Coulson, and Wayne remembers old Brother Coulson, you know. I don't know, is he still alive? He's not? Did he? I didn't know. Him. Well, he's in a good place, you know. Well, praise God. He used to work with me, and I was really shy, you know. We'd come into the family, and my dad had just passed away, and he would, the pastor would always work with us. He seen something in us all, you know. And so he worked with the young people and got them all involved, you know. And uh, he said, Ron, I want you to preach uh, Wednesday night. And I go, you do? <laughs> you know, you, you, go, you do? Really? Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, I'm going to preach Wednesday night. You know, he started getting nervous and scared. <laughs> I'm not preaching negative here. I'm, I'm just telling you how I used to react to things, you know. I mean, I would go off the deep end. I'd say, oh, my God, i got to preach i got to preach Wednesday night. <laughs> oh, Lord, what do you want me to preach, you know? And I'd, I'd be looking for things, you know. I'd be going, okay, I'm going to study the Word. But then you're studying the Word, but nothing comes, you know. And I said, Lord, I, I still don't know what I'm going to preach. It's, a, it's coming time for me to preach. And you still haven't given me nothing, Lord. He said, I got you right where I want you. You just keep calling out on me. You just keep asking me. That's what God wants us to do. Keep asking Him, you know. Keep saying those things, you know. Keep trusting in me when you're going through things. Keep trusting in me because I'm going to bring you through it, you know. And when I got up there on that platform, you know, it's about four foot, five foot high. I got up there for first two or three steps. I was going, Lord, I don't know about this. Yeah, I don't know about this. This ain't good, you know. I don't have a message yet, but I've trusted in you all week to give me a message, you know. And I just kept on, you know. You just, oh God, and you're up there going, well, I have something, but I, you know. <laughs> That's when you say, God, you need to help me. This thing is getting serious now. I'm in front of all the people now. I'm gonna look like a fool if I don't have something to say. You know, the devil does that to me still. He said. They don't like what you're saying. I said, I don't care, devil. God does. The Holy Ghost. You know, do what the Holy Ghost tells you, and people will love it because it's not you anyway. It's the Holy Spirit using you to encourage people, you know. So I get on that stage, you know, and I'm saying, Lord, you got to help me. I mean, I was trembling. I, if you wanted to know fear, that was fear. Because when I was first got uh, when I first start, got saved, I was uh, the pastor would call on me. I would go down in the chair. I mean, you couldn't see my top of my head anymore, you know. I was so shy. I didn't want to do it. I was running from God, you know. I said, I, don't, I can't be a preacher, Lord. I can't do this. You know, I can't do this. I, I fear people, you know, and I was always scared of people. I didn't want to be in front of nobody, you know. I said, they got something better to say. Let them say it. Let that one say it, you know. Now the Lord, when he lays a message on you, it's going to get across, you know. And it's going to go out and do what it's supposed to do. Amen. Hallelujah. And when we're, and, and when we're uh, am, I, am I preaching too long here? Hallelujah. I don't want to preach too long and hold everybody. But praise God, we'll just let the Holy Spirit move. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'll make this story a lot quicker here. I got on the platform, and I just uh, began. Men Tim used to preach and uh, uh, pray in my mother's room. We'd pray back and forth and interceding, you know. And, man, we were uh, talking in tongues, and the fire of God would move, you know. And we would looking at each other and laughing. The fire of God, you know, was falling. And uh, that's what we did a lot, you know. And it, it, it helped us all as we prayed together, you know. And so I got on the platform, and I said, Lord, okay, I've studied now what are you going to do? And then all of a sudden, 
all of a sudden, here comes those rivers of living water on the inside. That's so far down in the inside where he says, you need to learn to trust in me. You need to learn to trust in me all the way till the very end. Where I, then, you, you know, he pours it on you. And the words just come out and they start flowing, you know. It's nothing to do with you. It shows you you, you could get in God's way. It won't work out, you know. But when you say, God... I'm going to step out of the way, and I'm going to let you have your way in my life, you know. And that, that shyness will go away. The boldness of the Holy Ghost comes on, you, and you, it takes over you, and you don't even know what you're going to say from one end to the other, you know. It's just going to roll out like rivers of living water. It's going to flow out upon everybody. The Holy Spirit will move upon us and change our life. That's what it's about. It's changing our lives from day to day, amen. When we have a relationship with the Lord every day and praise Him and worship Him. And if you, you can go still, you know, you don't have to uh, worship Him every day. You notice your, your relationship with the Lord kind of gets cold if you don't keep going back to the river. And get in the water, you know. It's gonna keep, it's gonna get cold because that's why you need to go back every day, every day, and have a personal relationship with the Lord. If you don't have a personal relationship with the Lord, He wants to talk to you on a one-to-one -one basis and let you know what's going on around, you know, and to pray for this one and pray for that one, you know. That's 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 the Holy Ghost, and He knows when someone is hurting, and that's what I was telling you earlier. The Holy Spirit knows what uh, is going on around us. Uh, and we don't need to question. We just need to obey and do look, let God do what he's supposed to do. And he does a lot better job than we do. Amen. When we let the Holy Spirit move, that third person of the Trinity come off in the inside of us. Uh, where in rivers, oh, those rivers, they flow. They rivers flow, flow, flow. They don't, they don't stop, you know, and that's the way we need to do is stay in, in the river, folks. Amen. Hallelujah. Stay in the river. If we get out of the river, if we get out of fellowship with the Lord talking to us every day, and I notice that. And my, my, I'm, I'm, I can point my fingers back at and say, Ron, you know you did the things that you shouldn't have done, but you know what? God forgives us. And he puts them into the sea of forgiveness, never to remember them again. Amen? Because that's going to be a foothold for the enemy to come into your life to hinder you and try to stop what God really has for you, you know? There is therefore now no, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Amen? We need to learn to walk in the Spirit. We need to learn to live in the Spirit, you know. And I, and I pray until I feel like uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm where I need to be, you know. There was one time on a Greyhound bus, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you a lot of stories, but I'm going to tell you something, folks, it's real out there. When you tell people about Jesus, your life's going to be threatened. You're going to be threatened, you know. And I was on this bus, Greyhound bus, and, and I was talking to this lady. I was telling her about Jesus. She said, I don't want to hear about Jesus. I said, uh, and I started telling her about Jesus. She said, bus driver, he's telling me about Jesus. And she said, well, and she just got done praying when we left at the depot that uh, everybody on my bus, she was praying for everybody. And I'm telling you, she looked like Oprah Winfrey. If I could have swore she would look like Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> and hallelujah. Anyway, it got on the bus, and through the night, there was people in there that were threatening my life, and they said, we're going to kill you, you know. And I'm saying, Lord. Oh, God, you know, and I start threatening. I'm going, Lord, I, I don't want to die yet. I have a, I got a journey yet. I don't want to die, you know. And uh, anyway, through the night, they all tried to take me out and all that, and they threatened me with the words of their mouth. You know, the devil can only threaten you. He can't pull through what he's doing. And you know what I told them? You can all, you can all shoot me, whatever you want to do. I said, until God gets through with me, it'll never happen. You can blow it, shoot the gun at me, whatever. It'll never get to me because it's, uh, it's the will of the Lord, you know. And I say, God, not my will, but thy will be done in heaven as it is in, on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. When we got his will in our life, uh, it's going to work out for the good for all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. He is a wonderful God. And you know what? They threatened my life all through the night. When it got dark, it was, it was fine. I didn't have no fear. I was cool with them, you know. But when it got dark on that bus, I was going, oh, Lord. <laughs> you don't know what's going on, but you got to trust, you know. And she said, well, when you're asleep through the night, I'm going to stab your guts out. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord. I, 
Now, wait a minute. Now, wait. Now, Lord, I know you're with me. And, but you know what? My eye was open all night long watching her. Every little move she'd make, I'd go, I was ready for it, you know. I said, come on, devil. I dare you, you know. I thought, man, I'm, 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 I'm going to stop that knife. I could just see that. The devil uh, putting an image in my mind, that big old knife coming down and stabbing me you know, through the night. And then the devil always tries to put images in your thoughts, too, you know. And you just got to push it out and say, I'm, God, God's not through with me yet. God's not through with us, folks. Amen. Hallelujah. He's never through with us. And, you know, David was threatened by Saul. He was threatened all the time, you know, but God was always with David, and God would always deliver David wherever, he, whatever he went through, he came out of it, you know, because God was on his side and watching his back, and God's watching our backs, you know. He's getting us through what we need to get through, amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Psalms 142 says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. Now, David was in prayer. He was praying. You know, he was crying out to God. He was earnest. When your heart's not in the prayer, you can pray all you want. But if your heart is not in the prayer, you, in your heart, God knows everything. So he knows the heart. He knows our hearts. He knows what? He knows when you're genuine. He knows when you play games. He knows what, when, we're, when we're halfway in or halfway out, you know. God knows all of it. And we can't hide from nothing from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we got to know the voice of God. You know, and He will deliver us. Amen. And we know the voice of God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God is wonderful, isn't He, folks? Hallelujah. Praise His wonderful name. And I know how David, he got through things, you know, and, and the Lord always had me always uh, read about David, you know. And it was all about the praise and the worship, you know. When you're going through something, praise Him. When you're going through something you don't understand, just praise Him. When the doctors told you you're going to die, you know, you got so long to die, just praise the Lord. Just shout and sing, hallelujah. I don't believe in the report of the doctors. I really believe the report of the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. I was in the hospital, and I, was, I went through something, and I had the colon, part of my colon removed, you know. And these, these uh, nurses, they come up and they take your blood. And I said, what are you looking for? And they say, uh, I, and they say well, we can't tell you. And I said, oh, I know what you're looking for, but it's not going to be found in my body. I'm a child of the living God. You know, I was preaching to them. And I said, I know what you're looking for. You're trying to find cancer. I said, it has no part. I'm a temple of the Holy Ghost and bought with a price. Amen. And it's trespassing because any plague come nigh thy dwelling. It shall not come nigh thy dwelling. Amen. It shall not come nigh thy dwelling. We got lentils and doorposts, you know, in the blood of Jesus. And the old enemy tries to come and he tries to lie to each and every one of us, you know, to put us in a place where we can't even be heard or spoken. But God wants us to come out of those quiet places and start proclaiming his name. Amen. And not being shy and saying, thinking of this one. I, that, that was what the devil used the tactic on me. Well, this one's thinking of you of this. You know, and this, and you know, I start listening. Oh, really? Is that right? Oh, God. You know, and you want to go sit down, you know. But when you do it God's way and God tells you, come on, you can do this, you know. He coaches you along. The Holy Ghost will coach you. And he'll, he'll you know, he's a teacher. He'll, he'll help you get through everything. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, God is wonderful, isn't he? Hallelujah. But you know when they were threatening me on that bus, you know, I didn't, I, they, they were going to shoot me and everything they said. You ever seen somebody die? Watch this. And they had the gun. I heard the gun. I didn't see the gun, but I knew behind me, you know, that, that they were, this gang had a gun or something. And I said, Lord, they're going to shoot me. <laughs> I said, here I come. I'm coming home right now. I mean, I'm ready, Lord, if that's what you want, you know. You, you know, it's, it's feels really strange, you know, when you feel like you're going to be shot. <laughs> you're not going to be on this earth no more, or, you know. And so you got to kind of say, okay, Lord, um, am I ready to meet the Lord? <laughs> am I really ready to meet you, Lord, you know? And that's, I'm telling you, I said, Lord, I know I'm ready. And I want, if I, they shoot me tonight, Lord, I'm going to be in your presence. It's worth it more than uh, life. Amen. Hallelujah. 
But you know what? It was God's will, and I didn't, nothing ever happened. I jumped off the bus, and I never got back on. And the bus drivers were trying to get me back on the bus. I said, I ain't getting back on that bus. They threatened my life so many times. Ron, you get back on the bus, you'll be all right, I promise you. They started doing the same thing all through the night, saying, We're, shoot him, shoot him. I said, Lord, what is this? You know, the devil is going to try everything he can to, you know, fear, fear. He moves in fear and, and uh, doubt and confuse me, you know. But God moved. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. He's already completed. He's going to complete the work that he's put give us in us, you know. He's going to complete it, and it's going to be so great. Amen. Hallelujah. And he loves us so much, doesn't he, folks? And we know that. When you know the word, you know what I'm talking about. You get that word way down on the inside of you, and it just rises up, rises up against the old enemy that tries to steal, kill, and destroy, you know. Praise God. Praise the Lord. He is wonderful. Let's just stand up, everybody, and just praise and worship him. And, and uh, Hallelujah. Does anybody need prayer? We'll pray for you. And uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If nobody needs prayer, we'll just pray and just praise and worship. Amen. Can I have you get on the piano? Hallelujah. I can play piano, but I just thought her voice. <laughs> praise the Lord. God is wonderful, isn't he? Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we need to learn to trust in God, you know. He'll get us into that place where he wants us to be. And, and we will say, okay, Lord, here am I. You know, after you've gone through so much, you're going to say, Lord, I can't do this myself, but it takes you, Lord, to get me through it. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, everybody, hallelujah. 